since last weekend had such amazing weather, I decided to hop on my little scoot and ride up to northwest Alabama and into the Bankhead National Forest. It's a, a fantastic place, and there were several places that I had not visited before, and that was my intention, is to get on my scoot and ride to these uh, interesting places. One of them was an, an old Indian shelter, um, a rock shelter that has petroglyphs and all kinds of ancient carvings from the previous civilization. Um, when I arrived at not only the falls, there was uh, Kinlock Falls and Kinlock Shelter is the name of this place, and when I got there, they were both overrun with vehicles and presumably people. I saw a few people walking down the road, but I think each site had uh, maybe close to 100 vehicles, which meant there were probably two or 300 people out uh, between both of these places, and I decided that that kind of defeats the purpose. Um, I'm out in the woods to get away from people, not necessarily for <laughs> the the uh, outbreak and the pandemic. Um, I'm not really concerned about those, but um, just getting out in the woods was my primary purpose. And I accomplished that uh, despite the fact that I didn't stop at either uh, the falls or the, the ancient uh, Indian site. I will get up there soon. At, at least now I know where they're at. But I did uh, have a great time riding. I, uh, I put about, I don't know, several hundred miles on the motorcycle uh, this weekend. But more importantly, I spent hours riding down beautiful dirt roads like this. And most of the roads were pretty good shape. Um, you would think with all the rain that we've had lately that uh, these roads would be a lot more washed out and maybe bigger mud holes. Um, but it was not the case. Um, and I surely enjoyed um, the riding I did. It was, like I said, beautiful weather. Um, and we're running out of this perfect weather. Uh, there's really only a couple times during the year in Alabama that the weather is perfect. It's the spring and the fall. It's not, it's not too cold. It's not too hot. It's not too much humidity. And this was one of those perfect weekends to get away. And that's what I did. It's almost four o'clock on Saturday, and I have been riding for whew, five hours. Stopped to get gas, that was about it, and everything else has been prodding these little trails and forest roads. And I finally think I've gotten a pretty good spot here. I'm just trying to figure out exactly where I want to go. This looks like a Looks like I just rolled over a 50-year-old dump here. I'm only a couple hundred feet off the road, if that. But I also kind of, I mean, I'm in the forest here. I'm not worried about somebody coming and giving me a hard time. But I still want to kind of keep still. So if I just get down the hill far enough so nobody sees my campfire, my bike, I will be perfectly happy with that. I've, I've trotted several, several trails, several little spurs off of these, uh, these main forest roads. And the fantastic places are covered up with people and everything else is kind of crap so i mean i don't want to i don't want to cut single track to get to my camp and i almost had to do that here almost had to do that in the last couple of spots but i like this area so much besides the trash oh, that's a good spot it's in a corner so it's not going to be people looking at you from a mile away they're going to pass me by. Yeah, this is this is fine. I guess anywhere over this ridge would be fine. But I gotta get the bike turned around. <laughs> I was just thinking the saving grace on a small dual sport like I've got. Well, I don't. I don't want to say a small dual sport. I want to say small adventure bike because that bike is just as good as any other adventure bike. So you don't want to spend 15 hours riding it. Um, 
But if you're gonna take, if you're gonna be riding like I have today, much better. Much better to be to something something small and manageable like this. And it's still, I've got it loaded down so much, it's still a pain in the ass to turn around. But the last, the last dead, the last two dead ends I got to, I was like, man, if I was on a big block, I'd be screwed here. So I'm basically going down single track, down a hill. <laughs> and the only reason I can get it turned around easily. Oh shit. Oh. I don't recognize where I pulled in. Only, only way I can get it turned around easily, I can muscle it around. You know, I've, I've got just enough strength to move that thing around. If I was on a bike twice that size with just as much gear on there, and I'd probably have more because I have a bigger bike and more places to store it, uh, I'd be in trouble. A lot of times I get down in places like, like this and like the last two spots, like, well, this sucks i'm hanging off of a cliff what do i do now and there's no kickstand spinning on crap like this because the kickstand wouldn't even hold the bike up so this, this is probably boy scouts 101 first thing you got to do when you're looking for your campsite or if you think you may have found a campsite just look up make sure there's not any widow makers up there a dead tree that's coming down a big, uh, a big limb that's ready. It's way past its prime. <laughs> a, a widow maker that's up there, ready to dish out a little bit of sorrow and remorse. <laughs> All right. More about the widow maker. Um, I, I don't know if I'd call that so much a widow maker. That's probably been dead standing for 15 years, maybe. Um, but this is potential. A good wind could knock that over. And yeah, you just kind of kind of look out for stuff like that. I mean, you know, so it doesn't kill you. It's it's not gonna make you stronger. <laughs> it's gonna hurt. It may ruin your trip. You know, minimum it may just hurt really bad and make life suck. Which why would you want to put yourself through that, right? I don't know. I I would opt for. A, for a plan B, which is what I think I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna roll down just a little bit further. There's a good widow maker right there. That's That's been up for a while too. That's leaning. There's no telling when that thing's gonna come down. But then everything else looks pretty good around here. So here's the first test. If this guy can see me, or if I can see him, he can see me. Can barely hear him. So I have decided that this and that are my trees. I've got that resonating little dead guy there. I tried to push him over, he didn't fall. So I think what I'm going to try to do is something I hardly ever do when I'm camping is uh, remove saddlebags. So I'm going to unload the bike because I've got to spin that bike around anyway. And the less crap that's on it, the easier it is. So I may just uh, go ahead, unload it, spin it, and uh, then set up camp. I've got to knock out some uh, some small guys out of the way with an ax. This is this may be all that I set up for camp because I think I've got a five percent chance of rain tonight. Um, I mean, it's a good chance it could sprinkle, but I don't I don't see a storm coming in and surprising me. Um, but it's not the first time I've put I put up my tarp in the middle of the night, two a.m. This is going to be a 
nice quiet I, this may be my only piece of equipment i set up i may set up my chair it'd be easier to cook from a chair than this and i don't i don't necessarily want to have my fire next to my hammock now so especially if it's not raining i don't need to camp i don't need the tarp cover so but i'm gonna sit here and chill for a few minutes and rehydrate i haven't had much to drink today uh you may not be aware that i am a huge proponent of hammocks um this is one of the biggest reasons is that it's so easy to set up um in fact i did a video uh, i think i did a couple of maybe even three videos on why uh, hammock camping is so awesome if you live in the woods if you live in the desert it's not so awesome because you got to have trees or something to tie the thing off to um, so if you've got to carry a rack to put on the ground so you could tie the hammock off to it's not so good but i did two or three or four or 10 15 videos i'll uh, put those links up here um but i suggest if you if you've been disappointed with tent camping ever in your life you should investigate uh hammock camping um i had quite a few friends that were getting into hammocks and i just always put it off because i thought i can't sleep on my back there's no way even though i had passed out in hammocks before <laughs> usually after four or five beers just went <sighs> and that's really i i do that i've done that a lot in this hammock just conk but the biggest the, the big point for me was always um I didn't think I could sleep in a hammock because I, I've got to be able to lay on my stomach to sleep. And that's pretty much true still, either my stomach or my side. And I'm a, I'm a mostly a side sleeper, but you know, most hammocks that I've ever been in, it's just impossible to turn, you know, to turn your spine into a banana on the side. So, um, so I just put it off and I decided that that was not going to be for me. But then I kept seeing guys get into it, and I had a, I think I had a couple of friends say, "Yeah, I'm a I'm a back sleeper, a side sleeper, a stomach sleeper, and ASIM." They mentioned the word ASIM hammock, so I started investigating. Got one. It was a very expensive hammock. Um, you know, you can get hammocks for twenty, thirty dollars. So to see one like this, I think this was like 150, 180 bucks. It may have been two hundred bucks. I don't know. I spent a lot of money on it, but I got the best that I could get as far as I knew. This is a uh, um, war bonnet, Blackbird. And at the time, <laughs> there, there may be something better out there. I don't know. This fits all of my needs. I'm very pleased with this thing. Um, but for the people that don't watch my videos, I would like you to consider hammocks just in case uh, tent camping is starting to suck. Because it was really starting to suck for me. I can't remember. It seemed like camping never sucked. Tent camping never sucked for me until I probably started approaching my 40s. And then it just started to gnaw on me. It's like, why do I have to get down on the ground to get in my tent? And, uh, and the weather, you know, you, you get in when it's raining. You get out when it's raining. Everything in your tent's wet. Um, it just got to be a big pain in the ass to go camping, especially in bad weather. Um, and after I got this, I realized camping is awesome. It started being awesome again. So my concern is that either, either tent camping has never been for you or tent camping is slowly losing its appeal. Therefore camping is losing its appeal. Um, you should consider hammock camping as an option. That's my continual weekly pitch for hammock camping uh i got like i said i've got lots of details uh in the cards up above lots of hammock videos you just scroll through them till you get tired um and uh maybe just hit the playlist and see <laughs> they're not well done videos but i'm doing the best i can at explaining a, a pretty it's a fairly complex topic hammock camping is to explain it to somebody why why they need to try it because especially if you're a back sleeper you should you should at least own a hammock period even if it's a 30 dollar hammock you don't need an asim if you're a back sleeper you'll sleep like a log like i have many times when i'm tired or drunk or both 
Um, it's happened to me many times where I, I can't believe I woke up <laughs> snoring on my back. <laughs> anyway, check out the videos. Leave me a comment um, if you have any questions or if you have any concerns. I would love to help people get into hammock camping and extend your camping life. Extend your enjoyment. It, improve or increase your enjoyment of camping transform your camping experience if you're not having a good time camping anymore there may be a reason if you got your ass up off the ground i mean seriously look at this in in less than five minutes you can be doing this too you could be swing swinging Everybody else may be sitting in their camp chair or uh, sitting on the ground. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I could do that when I was a kid, I guess. I just don't ever remember enjoying sitting on the ground. I never remember doing, enjoying sitting on the ground. A log, sure. A tree, yeah. A chair, yeah. Sitting on the ground in my tent, I didn't like it. I mean, laying down in my tent, I could do that, but anyway... That's it. I don't know what else I got to say. I'm going to keep pitching hammock camping <laughs> until everybody's doing it. Do you suffer from night sweats when you think of camping on the ground? Can you not bear the thought of crawling into a tent for one more night of poor sleep? Maybe you should try hammock camping. It works for me. trying to figure out um, how best to cook on that grill over there um, I don't have a whole lot of great firewood to cook on so I'm just using the the best uh, stuff I can pick up off the ground I don't want to split a lot of wood um, but I just I, I kind of want Maybe start out with some flickering flames and then just kind of feed uh, the bed of coals um, as I'm cooking. Um, I don't think any of this stuff is going to take very long. In fact, I've got it separated into three different foil containers. I did all my chopping before I left because <laughs> I can use that little cutting board that I've got. Um, but I, I like to chop <laughs> And it just seems like it was so much faster just to chop. And this is going to be, I think this is, this may be my mushrooms. It's either the mushrooms or the cauliflower. So I got a lot of food. Got some olive oil. Mushrooms or cauliflower. My <laughs> roadkill <laughs> spice mix. <laughs> and then finally big huge thing of stir fry so i am not going to be hungry tonight unless i burn the shit out of all this stuff and then i've got a <laughs> i've got another option over there i'm not really excited about it if i burn it but um so far i've been doing really good on this stuff so i'm not i am not afraid i just got to get me a good bed of coals going so i can keep those fed and uh have some consistent fire Oh, look at that. Sausage, peppers, um, celery, broccoli, peppers, celery, broccoli, peppers, Koneka sausage. <laughs> and here, 
It's uh, some hot um, pepper sauce, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of a lot of ginger. You can see those little shredded ginger in there. And oh, come on out of there. Come on in there. All right. And I'm going to top it off with some water. Maybe, maybe, there we go. Kind of boiling back this too a little bit. Maybe not much at all, oh, there it goes. It was gonna soak through. I brought some extra foil just in case I fractured any of these things that looks like I did. Try to catch some of the juice without it all leaking out. And of course, the last thing to go on is the mushrooms. Those shouldn't take five minutes. I like a, I like a little bit of firmness and texture with my mushrooms. So I, I usually throw them if I'm cooking with something with mushrooms in it. I just usually throw them in the last minute, last two or three, four minutes anyway. Um, I talk like I'm a chef. I just, uh, I have, I've, I've been cooking since I was 12, so I've learned what I like and what I don't like, and I don't like mushy stuff. Thinking about looking into one of those firebox deals, except they're just so damned expensive for what they are. I think the... The firebox guy, the, what's that? I, I, he may be the originator. I don't know. He's got such a great, <laughs> he's got such a great YouTube channel. <laughs> I want one of his fireboxes. I promise, <laughs> if you send me a firebox, odds are I'm probably going to give it a really good review. I mean, I can't imagine it being that bad. <sighs> and maybe it's, I mean, it takes me. It takes me a good five minutes to set that grill up. It would be nice to think that I could put a firebox together in a couple of minutes and have a fire going. Um, I'm just wondering about feeding the fire. I'm wondering how that's going to work. I think I just smothered this damn fire. Well, yeah, maybe it's easier with a firebox. I don't know. I am intrigued with, one, with with them. I've looked at the cheaper ones. I think there's some out there for under 30 bucks. I just, it's just that whole experimenting thing. I mean, I guess that's what I'm doing now. It's just, I know what this, this grill will do and what it won't do. But I'm also wondering how, to, how does this compare to a firebox? I tried to make a, a little redneck version of a firebox. It it caught fire, but I guess it just wasn't breathing right. I don't know. Maybe that's why the firebox stove uh, is so expensive. It seems like his thing was like 70 bucks. Stainless, titanium, what what the hell is <laughs> is it? Is it made out of... Uh, <laughs> What's the, what's the uh, zirconium? What's the stuff from outer space? Iridium. Yeah, it's made from iridium. <laughs> Unobtainium. <laughs> okay, I'm laughing at myself. I'm probably not really that funny, but you know, maybe I'm just tired. Maybe I'm hungry. I mean, it is. It's almost seven o'clock. We are approaching summer. It is the fourth of April. Monday is my birthday. Hmm. I'll be 55 years old, y'all. Unbelievable. So something's bubbling. So we got something going for us. Oh, that's steaming. Yeah, let's let that steam. I think as long as we're steaming, we're golden. 
Now the question is going to be, how long is this flavor going to stay in here with all the liquid dripping out? My guess is not very long. I'm wondering if I should just transfer it. Since we know one of them is busted. Hmm. It's probably a big mistake. <laughs> so, <laughs> lately I've just kind of been filming everything. I'm running through some batteries and some SD cards, but I'm also wondering how much of this stuff is going to be pretty funny. Especially when I'm rolling camera, I... I transform into a person who is talking to a group of people. It's really funny if you think about it, how absurd that is, that there's nobody here in the woods, but yet I'm sitting here talking to a potentially audience of thousands of people. So I'm transformed. Like I would not behave like this. Like I, I giggle at myself occasionally, um, even less occasionally I uh, talk to myself <laughs> but it's usually something like that was stupid you shouldn't have done that or so you know I scold myself a lot but uh yeah I don't do what I'm doing now I am talking to the people that are watching this video and it transforms me I don't know what how to explain it other than the fact that I feel like and and I've I have felt that way for quite some time as soon as I started talking with the camera on like i think when i first started uh, recording motorcycle videos i think this that was like 2006 2007 yeah that's 2007 13 years ago i started recording motorcycle rides but i almost never pulled out the camera and and talked i don't think i did at all i don't think i ever did a selfie i never turned the camera on myself but occasionally i would pull out a camera or a cell phone or something and talk to somebody in the middle of a ride, hey, what do you think? Are you enjoying this? Crap like that, kind of interview type, type stuff. But I don't remember the first time I turned the camera around on myself. But it was shortly after that, especially when I'm by myself. Um, anytime I was talking to the camera, I was talking to whoever watched it. And I think back then my audience was... I don't know, 50, 150 people. It was pretty small. I mean, I'd, I've had a pretty small channel for probably a decade. Probably a decade I had, or more. I had less than, I had less than 500 subscribers. So, um, you know, just people, people that I knew, people that picked up on what I was doing, I guess, because of somebody else. I don't know. I don't really know who all was watching. It was, I would say, I had a core group of people, you know, 150 people that knew me. And those are the people that watched for a decade. And then other people popped in when they found something interesting or they searched for a keyword or, you know, I, I named my rides, you know, ride to so-and-so, ride to Monroeville. It's a little town in Alabama where um, a popular author was born. I would say... The worst video, <laughs> the worst video I've made in probably the last year was probably less than 50 people. But think about that. Think about the power of being able to sit alone in the woods and talk to 50 people. I mean, that's, that's extraordinarily powerful and interesting to me to be able to sit here in the woods by myself and communicate ideas, information, feelings. I'm not much on feelings, but, um, the ideas i am i am passionate about spreading my ideas so cooking healthy food over a campfire the, my ability to talk to thousands of people potentially and convince them to do something like this m more importantly maybe is getting on a motorcycle or get in your car and go out in the woods and hang a hammock in the in the woods and experience life in a different um, a different, uh, God, I gotta, I gotta get in here and stir this. So blah, blah, blah. 
I just think it's interesting. I find stuff like that extraordinarily interesting when I ponder it. Most of the time I just go, yeah, yeah, you know, this is, I mean, I know what I'm up to. Not everybody that watches me does. I would say very few people know what I'm up to on YouTube at least. Very few people. And if if they had, I would be shocked if anybody could come up with the my motivation for YouTube. I mean, most people are going to say something like, "Well, you're you just want to make money." Well, no, my my videos are monetized, but I make very little money just like most creators on YouTube. My main motivation is the same as it was the same as it was in 2007 when I started putting videos up on YouTube. It's the same motivation I want to inspire, I want to influence, I want to get people doing interesting things like like I have discovered. And it sounds, you know, it sounds maybe a little bit pompous, like you guys are too stupid to know what's fun. That's not, that's not the way I mean it. I mean it in a lot more, um, these might be done. Yeah, let's, oh shit. Um, I mean it in a more, um, inspirational way. So in other words, I want to, I want to share the information about what I think is important to with the people that may not have any idea. Well, damn. Is it leaking all the way through? Maybe this tinfoil is not such a great idea. Maybe I need to get a decent skillet. I don't know. I would like to uh, <laughs> have some juice in here left after all this. I don't want to spill it out all over the See if this is even close to being cooked yet. It looks like some of it's being cooked. Now this is getting close to a fail here, damn. I mean, I expected an occasional haul, but I didn't expect, this is almost like a disaster. Hmm, that's hot. Um, it has been riding around Mmm, that's pretty good Um, it has been riding around in the back of a motorcycle All right mushrooms don't let me down Don't let any of that <laughs> wonderful uh don't let any of that wonderful uh butter seep out of there all right here's the here's the key that's a little burn on the bottom yeah i was afraid that was going to happen because uh mm. i still like the idea of chopping it all up though so chop it all up throw it in a ziploc i'm really uh, intrigued by the whole dehydrating thing i really want to try that because i really i don't mind boiling stuff and throwing it in a bag boiling boiling a bag is not my problem my problem is the tasteless crap that's out there mountain house are you kidding me there's people that like that crap it's awful it's it's awful rice with smidgens of stuff in it that's not even flavored right it's so bland and dull dull and boring but people talk like it's um 
Like it's gourmet. Hell, I like MREs. MREs are great. <laughs> I would eat MREs if they weren't so carb centric. They've got a lot of carbs in MREs. So that's why I'm eating mushrooms. Mm. Mm. These didn't turn out so well. They're perfectly cooked. They just lost all their butter. Mm. The ones that got butter on it are really good. All right. I got by by the skin of my teeth. So maybe I need to look at some, invest in some cookware. I just don't like cleaning dishes. I think that's why those boiling on pouch crap may be so popular. I'm just eating so many of them, I'm sick of them. I've eaten a lot of MREs and I never got tired of MREs. I don't I don't know that I've ever had a bad MRE. That's the crazy thing. They're all delicious. And I'm talking about back before they had the heat them up packs. I ate cold MREs and they were delicious. <sighs> yeah. So mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's all trial and error. So this is um I guess kind of an Indian spice. Um, crushed red pepper. Coriander. A little bit of cumin. Um, salt. What else did I put in here? Oh, turmeric. I think turmeric does more than coloring than it does anything else. Kind of like paprika. You say, mmm, I taste that paprika in there. Really? Uh, leave me a comment if you can taste paprika. I, I'm pretty sure you could taste turmeric. I just don't think it's a very strong flavor. So that was a uh, was a chilly night. Probably should have brought my uh, sleeping bag. I don't have a top quilt. Um, just like everything else, I put that. I put. <laughs> I always put the right thing off. Um, like the under quilt, I put that off forever and. Uh, just decided I wanted to camp in the winter in my hammock and said screw it but also I like I like being warm so it kind of I, I don't know I'm just a little bit afraid of that whole uh, top quilt thing because I know I'll probably survive in a 30 degree bag in a hammock But I don't know if I'm going to survive in a damn top quilt. I don't know. There's just too many unknowns. And my biggest problem is I toss and turn. Like, that's, that caused some problems last night and before with the uh, the whole underquilt. Because I think I'm, I'm flopping over the underquilt and pushing the underquilt. It's just elastic. It's held under me with elastic. And when you flop over the the uh, the ridge... It pushes it on the other side, so you basically have no under quilt. So, anyway, I think it was supposed to be down in the mid 50s last night, but it's kind of hard to tell. It was it was chilly. I just don't think it was that chilly. And now I'm struggling with. 
making coffee or not making coffee. I got just a little bit of water. Since I barely had enough water to make a small pot of coffee, I decided to go ahead and load up and and get in some more riding uh, before the sun went down. I had one more place in particular that I wanted to visit. Um, I'm a big uh, fire tower guy and there's at least one fire tower that I know of in the forest and I wanted to get the drone up there and take a look at that. But more importantly, I wanted to do some more riding and exploring. Um, I never, seems like I never can get enough exploring up here in the Bankhead. Um, I know there's probably plenty of roads that I've never even been down or seen. Um, and the ones that I have been down, I'm not real familiar with. I don't even know what's up here. But I feel eventually I will be able to get out here and uh, conquer the Bankhead and uh, maybe find some more interesting places to camp. Um, maybe even on a creek. That would be fantastic if I could find a way to get up into one of these creeks without uh, doing too much <laughs> destruction and especially uh, maybe not going to jail. Okay.